We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to tip of the week. One task many of us dread as builders is the painting. Notice behind me we have a paint job in progress. We are at Herman's Wheels and Wings operation where he's helping a customer paint their aircraft. And I think you'll get a kick out of what Herman came up with for a paint booth environment. Let's take a look and see if this gives you any ideas for your job. Most of us agree that an aircraft will fly great without any paint at all. So this is an optional step and one of the first decisions after you've decided that you want to paint is to whether do it when the plane is all assembled or as in this case when the components are still separate. Makes it a little bit easier. Notice this very nice stand that allows both wings to be held in place while we work on them as well as the other control surfaces smaller in size above there. And this allows us to put them back as we work on each one and when I say work on each one there is plenty of preparation work which involves priming and sanding and maybe etching all sorts of different techniques and procedures to get a very nice finish. Before painting we need to lay down a large tarp to keep paint off the floor. Well this is not a tarp. This is actually a paint booth which will come to life right in front of our eyes. If you notice to the right on the floor is a green turbine compressor and it is inflating this tarp. Now this is a purpose designed paint booth which will form itself shortly this is not time lapse, this is actual wall clock time as you see it literally unfolding in front of your eyes and forming a wonderful structure. Note that it really doesn't need any effort to put it up other than switching the compressor on. So one positive aspect is that it can be quickly created. Here's a view from the other side and by just letting it do its thing it will erect itself in no time and then we'll take a walk around it and see exactly what it looks like. Notice the large opening at one end as you can literally drive a car into this. It is very lightweight if you notice it can be shifted around very easily by just pushing so if we place it outside we do need to stake it down to keep the wind from taking it away but indoors it works out very very nicely and let's take a little tour around each side At this end, we have an entrance for personnel. Now here is the turbine blower, which must remain running and keeping pressure to keep the booth in its erect form. So that does have to be running at all times. You can imagine what happens if you pull the plug. We have a large observation window so we can watch as work is being done. And here's a hatch underneath this panel with a filter. At the other end is a large zipper entrance. Now these paint booths come in all sorts of sizes. This one is large enough for an automobile without any problem at all. On the inside the floor is sewn in so it is 
pretty much a sealed structure. Very nice. Here stands holding the wings have been rolled into the booth and preparations are underway to get ready for painting. We have our HVLP paint gun, gravity feed on top, and all the chemicals. This is a two-part paint and it is based on Stuart Systems water-based paint so it makes the fumes a lot more safer and of course we have to weigh very carefully the amount of activator or hardener added to the paint to make it work properly. Herman has implemented a very sophisticated air drying system here. You can look this one up online, the Schultz ADS 50. It actually cools the air and Herman is now in his Tyvek suit and we're ready to begin painting. Notice the fan in the lower left corner. That was added because for ventilation you really are kind of on your own to pull air through there. Not too fast but sufficiently enough so that you aren't living in a fog of paint in there. And of course we can watch from the outside through the observation glass, as you might say. And notice the lighting that is being used. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Notice when it's ready, these racks can be rolled out of the booth and then another set rolled in for painting. These racks were also available on Amazon. They're uh, very useful. And everything is hanging up to dry. There is a second turbine blower to bring fresh air in, but that didn't seem to work too well, and that's why that extra fan was placed at the front corner to keep the air moving through. Those holes are for more ventilation through a filtering cloth fabric and then there's the fan that was placed at the corner. When we're all done with the paint booth it's a matter of simply turning off the compressor and it will nicely fold itself up onto the floor. Well, pretty nice anyhow. It's your job now, if you're going to put it away, to fold it properly. And just like a big sleeping bag, it can be put away with some effort. Using your body to try and push all the air out and flatten it down and it will all fit back nicely in a red sack that it came in. Very nice. For good lighting, these are from Amazon. Adjustable up and down. LED. No halogen, LED. I recommend getting a thin diffuser so that the light is not so concentrated. But this makes a big difference when watching your work as you spray. And there you have it. The oh, one more tip. One more thing to look at. Hold on. Now, before we get back to building, we have just one more thing to look at. Look at these wonderful wing stands. They're easily built, made out of plywood. You simply use your rib as a template in a sheet of plywood and assemble it as such. And these are very portable. They're small. You can put them away because, frankly, we don't stand our wings up all the time just when we take them off the plane. So with four of these, you can stand two wings up. And if you want to make them portable, put a dolly underneath them, and now they roll around. 
material here is nothing more than denim from an old pair of jeans. And we have two thicknesses of plywood sheet. A nice job. All right, now, you know the drill. 